Well, uh, good question actually. How did the Alien Dawn come about? Well, it started, I think it was two years ago now. Uh, is it two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago now, and uh, I had uh, two weeks off work. I was supposed to be on holiday, but I never really took a holiday. I used to come home because I used to work in Preston. So I came home, and we decided we wanted to do a science fiction film. Uh, Steve was sort of like into the uh, the thing and stuff like that, and he was getting pretty good with his CGI, so we decided the best thing to do was basically make a film that involved a lot of CGI and, as usual, a bit of comedy, because, well, that's what we are, basically. We're not exactly actors, so when we try and act, it just results in, uh, in comedy, even though it's not supposed to be comedy, but still. So that's how it came about. We, uh, we shot it over, I think it was about three days which is a bit of a record for us because we like to get the camera out in the morning and then pack it away by about seven o'clock in the evening that's how our film shot usually but we took about three days with this one uh, we shot a lot of the outdoor stuff in one day and then we shot the the house stuff in another day so yeah that's really how Alien Dawn came about it was more of a, a supposedly holiday off from work and it resulted in Alien Dawn <laughs> We sort of said, oh, I'm going to have to sort of get into gear and do Alien Dawn too, because by that time we, we got quite a quite a good uh, following of people on the internet who wanted to see Alien Dawn too, and we'd done teaser trailers and stuff. So basically, Ian sat down and started writing the the film, writing the screenplay down and that lot. We sort of see how it goes, and, and we we got something workable, doable that we we liked the sound of, so we cracked on with it, and we sort of really got on with it. But it's not been easy at all. It's, it's been a really long haul, this one. The reason we made Alien Dawn 2 and what we wanted to achieve was it was basically Steve put it on the internet on our website, dangerousdeck.com, and uh, we got some really good feedback. We weren't expecting to get the, the sort of feedback we got, actually, because at the end of the day, we liked Alien Dawn, but it was just a bit of a laugh like a lot of the stuff we do. And we got some really good feedback. You know, people enjoyed it. People were saying how good they thought it was, which to us was like, you know, thumbs up, someone actually likes what we're doing, which is always, always nice, you know. So we decided with this one, we was going to do more story to it. Uh, Steve had just got a new job, I'd quit my job, and I was living back in Hull, so I was basically pretty bored, and I was working at the Sony Centre. Anyway, of that, uh, so what I did was I basically started work on the script, and I had to somehow work out how my character was going to come back from the dead because at the end of the the last film he obviously dies or he, he dissolves to nothing so that was going to be a major problem and we wanted to bring John Baxter back and we really need to sort of explain exactly what these aliens was and what was going on so I just set about really basically trying to work out what the aliens are and how they, how they morph into people and how to go about doing that, just so you sort of like get an idea of what's actually happening. Well, it, it's like the, the we we actually opted for um, proper physical explosions as opposed to the uh, CG ones that we've been criticised with before, and um, that was fun actually. We ended up wanting to film the explosions more than actually film the film, which is uh, good. Well, not good from the film point of view, but good from the enthusiasm of it, so yeah, it, it's been tough. We wanted real explosions in this film because, like I said, we'd seen stuff done on SAC on the internet and really the stuff on SAC's doing is really impressive. It impresses every time we watch it and we thought, right, if he's using fireworks, we're going to get some fireworks. So we got some fireworks because it was basically uh, bonfire night three days uh, after we was filming. So we got some fireworks, read the packaging. Anything that uh, a limited, uh, emitted stars and bangs was in the bag, basically. So we would, like Steve's already talked about, putting fireworks behind the back of my head. That was quite prob problematic because we didn't know exactly what the fireworks was going to do. So we basically we selected our packs of rockets um, and we just nailed them to the trees. It was quite interesting, as you, uh, as, um, as you'll see on the documentary of the pyrotechnics. It was quite interesting because we didn't know what the actual rocket we bought did. It just used, we used to read the small print and it said eject stars and we used to just nail it to a tree, light it and run and hope for the best and in the end out of the, the, the pound rockets it was like yeah I think it was 4 99 for a pack of five rockets. We found out exactly what they did and how best to get the best sort of results out of them by sort of blocking them up with some leaves and that. 
we actually sellotaped a few of them up and that lot. But I think putting leaves on the top was quite good because the actual the leaves caught fire and it sort of you know it was a bit unnerving. The blow up I jump sometimes a few bit eagerly. You know I'm going to jump down and it blow up behind you. And you know at the end of the day I'm really impressed with what we did with the fireworks actually. And I think you know, Steve's made it made it look really good with extra sort of oomph by you know adding some great sound effects and sliding them down slightly and really happy with them, they look, they look really impressive. It really came about with the fact that we received a lot of criticism for always using these screened on explosives where you got like on second friends in Chemical Alley. There was using real explosives and you get like Grant, E again, he's master of explosives of Grant. I think if we could pick a team of these independent films we'd get on sack there and we'd also get Grant and get Grant to do the explosives on all that much and we'll probably get one sack for his pure stupidity. The, the second, so like the third biggest problem for us, in, again involved the firework, was the big super duper firework which uh, we let off underneath this little bridge which was only, only about five foot high by about I would say seven foot across and what we did with this firework was basically attach it to a large wooden stick underneath the bridge nail it down with a couple of other big fireworks attached to it, set it off and boof it goes up. But what we didn't expect was the, the actual bang of the fireworks. So there was this van on top of the bridge which was uh, filled with landscape gardeners. And I was underneath the bridge with Steve and uh, I sort of lit the firework. Uh, Steve stands back and I stand back and then it started whooshing. And believe me, it whooshed. It washed and we decided, right, we're not going to stay, we're going to run on top of the embankment because this looks like it's going to go off. We ran up and bang, it was the loudest bang you have ever heard. I'm talking big bang, this was a small village as well, remember. So this, this fantastic bang went off. Ash goes to the top of the bridge, all this smoke just bellowing out the bottom of the bridge and this, this van of landscape gardeners, they literally just jump out the van. What? what's going on, you know, that kind of thing, and I, I ran over and I said, just calm down, relax, it's just, we've let a firework off. Yeah, the drain sequence, again, um, went down to the location, uh, it was all obviously fully planned, this was the best thing about Alien Dawn 2, really, we really planned our shooting out to be, to be uh, quite good, although we got the windy days, but I think that helps with the overall look of the, that sequence, but he had a drain when I was there in my wellies that I borrowed off my dad, which leaked. But every time I complained about leaking wellies, Ian would just point out the fact that he was covered in mud and completely soaked. I remember discussing with Steve this should be basically the big scene, and it's going to involve me getting wet, which wouldn't be the first time throwing myself in a, in a river for the last film we did many moons ago. Uh, so this one again was basically rolling in the mud and falling into the mud and Steve filming with his dad's welly boots on which I might add he, he bitched a bit about uh, getting a bit of water in his socks but he, let me explain the fact that I was absolutely saturated, covered in shit and it stunk, this, this muddy crappy water smelt like shit. And it's advantages having leaking wellies I suppose but yeah it was weird because at first um, when I was editing the footage of that sequence I was using a lot of the very first parts of the footage where Ian was in the water and he was sort of running there and, and it looked rubbish because Ian was holding back at that point because he was oh, not wanting to get his feet wet as as as, uh, as the saying goes but no when he sort of threw himself into the water and he just got completely soaked that's when the best sort of running was because at the end of the day if he was running from an alien that just turned invisible that just killed your best mate you wouldn't be bothered about stumbling to the deepest points of the uh, drain or anything like that, you just sort of do one. You know, it wasn't much fun, but, you know, but at the end of the day I realised Steve's going to edit it and he's going to put CG and things on there, and it becomes worthwhile and that's what it's all about. That's what this sequel is about, really, trying to better the first one and just give people a little bit more, and I hope people enjoy it. The internet does and always will affect our filmmaking process because we, we have an audience but that audience isn't necessarily just our friends like it used to be. The audience is like worldwide now. So whereas before we'd be making the film just for ourselves and we really, we liked the way it was and that really was it. Now we're dealing with the, an audience worldwide and we don't know who's watching. I mean for all we know really uh, important figures in their uh, film making could be watching it, we don't know, but it's like 
things like comedy, British comedy, don't translate very well in America, and it's little things like that. I mean, with Alien Dawn 2, because of the length of time it's taken us to do, to to make it, and we've got a group of, of fans on the internet who have, like really been waiting for this for like a year, and so the pressure's on. I, I'm, I'm really worried that when, when we do release it on the internet, people are going to think. Oh, you know, it's not as good or, or whatever. It's really nice. It's really nice when someone logs on and they watch your work and they have something nice to say about it. I mean, if they have anything to say about it, it's a bonus because they've watched it. So now when you make a film, you've got to be thinking basically it's going to be seen by a lot of people. So when you're filming it, you want to make sure that it's the best you can do. So we really pulled the stops out and, you know, whatever it took, we, we, we did it. The pressure's on. I, I'm, I'm really worried that when we do release it on the internet, people are going to think, oh, you know, it's not as good or, or whatever. But the action's good, but there's more storyline, so I'm just hoping there's a good happy medium and we don't bore them all to death. We tried to make the action more action-packed, and by doing that we did quite a few things. Basically we decided the ending should be a bit more dramatic than obviously setting it in a house. We wanted to get away from the fact that we filmed a lot of it in a house. We wanted to get out and about with this one. So we went to the local library, we filmed uh, a scene there. There's not really that much CG in it, so I'm not really trying to achieve too much. It's just This one's more like helping the plot along rather than saying, oh look, we have some CG elements in here because that's what I wanted to do. It's not really like that, the second one. We was actually filming on private property as well, just to, we like these challenges, shall we say. We was filming on uh, farmer's land, which uh, this farm has been known to get quite aggressive in the past, which worries us a little bit, but when we was filming we uh, kept our eyes out for tractors and things, because obviously that's what farmers use as transport tractors, apparently. So we was uh, filming one scene, which was me uh, fleeing the, the alien that was hiding in the trees, and the combine harvester thing was out and about, so what we did was used to hide behind the trees, listen out, and then when the combine harvester would go, we'd get back together and then we'd film again. So that was that was basically one of the challenges, uh, and the the bridge and the river, but all in all it went fairly smoothly really. Yeah, uh, if you haven't seen it, which if you're watching this on the internet you probably haven't yet, but when it comes out, uh, I hope you all like it. And if you don't, tough shit, because I think it's uh, the hardest work we've done on a short film, so... Well, really, there's nothing else to say other than I, I just hope you, you know, you there are actually, you know, enjoying watching this, and I hope you enjoy watching the film, and basically just thanks for going to our website and actually downloading stuff and giving us your feedback, because without you people downloading stuff, we've got no idea whether what we're doing is actually any good or whether it's crap, so well, just keep downloading stuff. for me. It's never for me.